Hello, welcome back. Um, today we're going to go over an application of uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. Let me just remind you of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, so if you start with a continuous function on a closed interval a and b, and if, uh, if capital F is an antiderivative of little f on the closed interval a and b, then you can write the integral of uh, little f from a to b as capital F evaluated at B minus capital F evaluated at A. So essentially this theorem says that if you know the antiderivative of the, of the function that you're trying to integrate, then the, the, you can find the value of the definite integral by using the antiderivative function. So why don't we go ahead and apply uh, this theorem to the first sub-exercise. Before we hit the road, let me talk about the guidelines for using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, so here we go. If you know the antiderivative of f, so you in fact have a good detour of uh, evaluating the definite integral, and you bypass all the limit of a sum business or Riemann sum business. So here's the notation uh, that we use uh, along the way. So integral of little f from a to b is equal to the antiderivative function, and here's the bracket notation. You put the lower limit and upper limit here. So essentially what you do is like you evaluate f at the upper limit and subtracted, uh, subtract uh, f evaluated at the lower limit from that. Okay. So here's an example to evaluate the integral of x cubed from one to three. So essentially we know the antiderivative of x cubed, which is x to the fourth uh, divided by four. Uh, to convince yourself, in fact, you can just take the derivative of x to the fourth uh, divided by four, then you should probably get back to x cubed. That's what we start here. So, so using this notation here, so the antiderivative of this function is x to the fourth divided by four. We put the lower limit of the integral here and upper limit of the integral here. What we're gonna do in the next step is to evaluate the antiderivative function at three, so it's gonna be three to the four divided by four, here we go, 81 over four, and then minus, we're gonna evaluate uh, the same antiderivative at the lower limit, which is, uh, which is for x equals one, so one to the four divided by four, so eventually you have 81 minus one divided by four, that is exactly equal to uh, 20. And as the final step in, in the guidelines is that it's not necessary to include an integrating constant uh, when you take the antiderivative. In fact, even if you add an integration constant, it's gonna disappear along the way. So as you see that antiderivative plus C evaluated at the upper limit B minus the same antiderivative, including the arbitrary constant evaluated at A, is gonna be F of B plus C minus f of a plus c, so c's are gonna be canceled along the way. So even if, even if accidentally you put the integration constant, well that should be gone or canceled along the way. All right, here's our first example, the definite integral of uh, u minus five divided by uh, root u du. Um, so uh, the function is, is a little bit complicated to, to find the antiderivative of that. Let me just call this function as little f of u here, the variable is u obviously, so there's no x, so u minus five divided by root u. As you see that, it's hard to see the antiderivative of this function uh, since the function is given as a rational function, but, but there's a go around that. In fact, I can split this into two fractions. One is u over uh, radical u, and the other one is five over radical u, and then let's see if we can sort of like write this with the, with, with the help of exponents. All right, so this one, uh, well, this is u to the power of one, dividing u to the power of one over two, and then this one is five, dividing u to the power of one over two. So if you divide two exponential terms uh, with the same base, you essentially subtract the power. So it's gonna be one minus one half, minus, and then this is the reciprocal of uh, u to the power of uh, one half, so it's u to the minus one half. So essentially what we have here is that u to the one half minus five, u to the minus one half. So the reason why we went through uh, this route is that um, 
Uh, as you see that F doesn't look to have a known antiderivative, but if we convert that expression into the difference of two exponential terms, we know how to find the antiderivatives of these guys. So, so for that reason, uh, the antiderivative function, which we represented by capital F, will be, for this one, for u to the power of one half, it's going to be u to the power of one half plus one divided by one half plus one. Okay? You can check this out. If you take the derivative of this, you should be able to get back to u to the power of one half. In fact, if you take the derivative of this, um, so this is one half plus one, that, that becomes a multiple in front of the function. So it's like uh, one half plus one times uh, u to the power of one half plus one minus one. So things cancel out, so you get back to u to the power of one half. And for the next term, the antiderivative is going to be u to the minus one half plus one divided by minus one half plus one. So once we simplify the expression of capital F, this is what we get. u to the three halves and two, two thirds as a multiple here, and then you have one half here, um, and then you have, you have five, so five divided by one half is ten. So this becomes u to the power of uh, one half, all right? So the good news is that once you know the antiderivative, then we can go ahead and use the fundamental theorem of calculus for integration. So we can go ahead and then say that this integral here, which is u minus five divided by u, and using the notation that we just checked out, so it should be f of u with the bracket notation from the lower limit to the upper limit, which essentially means that you're gonna evaluate f at the upper limit, and then you're gonna evaluate f at the lower limit and subtract them. Here, the final result is f of four minus uh, f of one, so we go ahead and then uh, evaluate uh, f of four, which is two thirds, four to the power of three halves minus 10 times four to the power of one half. Let me just clean this part. All right, so this is f of four minus f of one. It's equal to two thirds, one to the power of three halves minus 10 times uh, one to the power of one half. All right, let me continue from here. So four to the power of uh, three halves is gonna be eight. So two thirds times eight minus uh, 10 times uh, four to the power of one half, but four to the power of one half is two. So this is gonna be 20 and minus, let me just write it here, and minus, um, two-thirds minus 10, okay? And that ends up with uh, 16 over three, 14 over three minus 10. And that is equal to negative 16 over three. And I can go back and conclude that the value of the definite integral is negative 16 over and here is the graphical outlook of uh, the function f, as you see that this integral from 1 to 4 provides you the negative area between the curve and the x-axis. Because, well, area cannot be negative, but you take the negative of the area between the curve uh, and the x-axis, because function takes all negative values uh, within that interval. So that integral corresponds to the negative of the area between the blue curve and the x-axis.